In today's video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the 2019 reimagining of the Lion King. Immediately, the concept of the reptilian overlords comes to mind. The lions are the predator in the savannah and also the leaders. Are they teaching us to metaphorically give our lives to the royals or that the royals plan to eat us as so long as we stay in the light? Or are they saying that the lions are the equivalent of the Palladians and they look after us so long as we stay in the light? But if we enter the darkness and stray from our destined past, will we end up with evil, tyrannical leaders? Immediately, the film begins with what looks like a baptism, heavy Christian symbology, and it's a mandrel, an ape species that is performing the ceremony, holding up the baby to the crowd, a lot like Michael Jackson did. Was MJ a government shill? Was Lion King readying us for him? Or was MJ performing a similar technique of blessing the child? Was the child that he helped even his own? Or was it a body ready to be inhabited by a reptilian? Scar talks about how some are born to be eaten and others are but destined to feast. And that he answers to nobody. Ah, Mufasa and Zazu a representation of the Galactic Federation trying to control and speak to the reptilian who has no interest in joining the family. Scar says he's smarter, implying she is cunning. The reptilians are said to be able to shapeshift, that's a cunning trick. Zazu talks of his cousin having a mental illness, believing he's a woodpecker rather than a hornbill. Then Mufasa walks off. This shows you that the leaders ignore mental illness and regard it as unimportant. The mandrel performs a spiritual act in the dark at the base of the Boab tree. Many ancient civilizations had tales of a tree of life. Simba says, give orders for the hunt and chase off evil intruders. As if that's all that leaders do. Look Simba, Everything the light touches is our kingdom, but a king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. That's something that Mufasa says now. Is this about the aliens and the ethereal beings that protect this realm from the darkness? It belongs to no one, but it is for you to protect. This shows that as a leader, Mufasa doesn't feel as though he owns his subjects, whereas in the real world, our leaders act as if they own us. Everything you see exists together in delicate balance. We don't, we, don't we eat the antelope? We're all collected. Now that's just a little bit of a back and forth from Simba and Mufasa. That's who comes and tells stories or the news of the Pride Lands, and Mufasa gets Simba to pay close attention, but actually attack the bird rather than hear the news. This is showing that the powers at the top want to dismantle the news, but does this mean the news is evil, or does it mean it's of little to no relevance to the leaders, only to the prey they are reporting on? Hyenas are hunting in the Pride Lands, and Mufasa goes to protect the Pride Lands from the hyenas. Are the hyenas an invading force? Most definitely, they're also a different species. This shows that the leaders of Earth are fighting invaders that are of a different species to humans. Simba gets distracted by following a beetle, rather than doing what he was told to do, showing that distractions take you off of your path. Simba was immediately off his path and did tempted by the dark, evil scar. Simba is told about a secret, dangerous land. Rotting bones, oozing mud, a lot like skeletons and lava in hell, in the dark, in the underworld. Zazu goes with Simba and Nala on their expedition to the watering hole. Like an overseer, earlier he was the news agency, but he is also the all-seeing eye, whilst also being stuck on traditions such as arranged marriages and destiny, yet he is completely disregarded yet again. Are they trying to teach us to ignore our preset destinies? Or are they trying to teach people that the kids should give up their dreams because their futures are predetermined based on their socio-economic circumstances? Song lyrics, everybody looks left. 
everybody look right, telling people to pay attention, getting people to keep their own the prize, so to speak. Or is it more sinister, telling you to look everywhere except the head of you? If you stop looking at what you're supposed to be doing, you lose track of it. Maybe Zazu or the news is there to protect the establishment, but in the busyness of the world, they lost a sight of their job and the new king slipped away, unprotected and at risk. In the next scene, hyenas discuss their tactics. I distract so that everyone else can circle. This is what the aliens could be doing. The female hyena, Deirdre, said, Mufasa doesn't control me. Zazu said that if the hyenas eat baby Simba, it'll start a war. The hyena says lions and hyenas have been at war since the beginning of time. A lot like the supposed war between light and dark, or the intergalactic war between Greycos and Palladians. The hyenas are led by a woman, and recently there has been a bigger and bigger push for equal rights for women. But also, a woman is trying to be president of the USA, so could this be a bit of propaganda saying women leaders are evil? Nicola Sturgeon wants Scotland to be independent, and Angela Merkel, leader of Germany, possibly has a lot of authority within the EU. The EU is a collection of countries, just like America is a collection of states. Does this mean they are operating in the shadows to perform nefarious tasks, like eating babies? Oh, Jesus Christ. The girl hyena also talks about ending the bloodline of Mufasa and killing Simba. There is a lot of talk of bloodlines when discussing the leaders of the world and the reptilian race, either using children's blood as fuel for, or putting themselves into the bodies of people in these bloodlines to take over positions of power. Mufasa comes in and bathes the area in light and roars to protect Simba and Nala. Is this showing that the thing that protects us most from the evil entities is our five senses? Could this mean that mindfulness is a practice to strengthen our perceptions of the five senses whilst also stopping us from thinking or hearing our thoughts? Could our thoughts all be intrusive and given to us by dark beings like the hyenas? And the more we consume and interact with sensory materials, the more we can quieten the evil beings trying to trick us. Some fringe media tries to teach people that consuming and capitalism is evil. But what if it's actually a surefire way of protecting the species of Earth from tyrannical rule? As then, we'll all be feeling good all the time and not allowing the dark entities to tempt us as we'll already have everything we want. We could see the elephant graveyard as an allegory for unknown knowledge. Simba doesn't know what this place is and wants to discover it. Just like in the Garden of Eden story, Eve eats the apple to gain information she didn't already know. Is this simply a ploy to make people prepared to never leave their towns? Are they trying to teach people to never leave their towns? Stay where you are and keep your town going. Ignore the bigger picture. Mufasa says that even kings get scared. Whilst Mufasa looks to the starry skies and says, no more do you know, which shows our world leaders are scared of what's in the sky, specifically the universe. Mufasa says the kings of the past look down on us from the stars. Simba says he can't see them, and so he has to keep looking. This is, is this because the beings in the sky that are referred to in alien law and allegedly in Scientology that are trying to break through our ionosphere are there at the border? A lot like those demon-like dogs that were sent to attack Wakanda in the Avengers movies. Another Disney film. The hyena describes Mufasa as having good energy, like having a specific type of energy can protect you. Scar comes to the hyenas, saying they've stripped the land of all of its life and of those that live in the dark are hungry and destroy everything with a total disregard for the natural order. Scar gives a speech about how the mighty should be able to take whatever they want from the Pride Lands with no repercussions. Describing Mufasa's reign as a failing regime, which 
seems a perfect way to get people on board with you if you want to overtake a position of power. Offer them something in return for doing all the work. So, if we view Star as a reptilian and the hyenas as the rich and powerful, constrained by laws, then Star is a great way to allow the powerful to act lawlessly and achieve their goals. Scar sells them a dream, a vision, his vision that encompasses you, a murky scam, a coup, telling them to be prepared. You could look at this as a representation of how aspiring leaders always tell their potential populace that the times are changing. The scene finishes with Scar next to the moon, repeating, be prepared. Is this because there is something in the moon that will attack us? The moon is mostly dark, and the dark side of the moon is often seen as dangerous and mysterious. Is there something or someone plotting to rule the world from the moon? Some people believe the moon is a sort of seed bank, the ark of Noah's tail, and that it's full of space Nazis just waiting to make their move. Interestingly, the original Lion King has a scene that I remember being similar to goose stepping, which was something the Nazis were known for in their marches. So is there an underlying plot here to tell us that the Nazis are in the moon? The gods is where lions come to find their roar. Scar is again selling a dream to the young Simba. Simba wants to grow up. This shows the way the evil entities can manipulate you through dreams and ambitions, just to further their own agenda. Is this why celebrities are supposedly used to perpetuate ideas? Turns out Scar was just thrown Simba under the bus. A bus of rampaging wildebeest. Cattle-like creatures that are being used and manipulated by the hyenas. If you view Simba as one of those fabled people in the bloodlines, and then view them as a celebrity that has been sold its dream and fulfills it, whilst simultaneously viewing the wildebeest as the general public being ushered down the canyon by the hyenas, or herded like sheep, through a narrow pass, these people would destroy the possibly self-actualized Simba. Seeing someone fulfill their dreams helps other people think they can also achieve their dream. But here, Simba is being built up just to be knocked down in order to cause a sadness. A great sadness in this case. The plan is to upset Mufasa, making him weak, ending his bloodline and giving Scar total control of the Pride Lands. This happens in the real world. Artists achieve their goals, and then the media, also present in the scene, and Jazzy, who is looking to locate Simba, almost as if to say the media is being played off against the leaders. Anyway, Jazzy reports on how being successful ruined the person's life, or about how they died, almost in a ritualistic manner. Scar sends Zazu to get the prize. The Mizu is looking in the wrong direction, following orders from the evil entity. Is the dead tree that Simba clings to, symbolic of the environment and decaying state of the world? Scar then strikes his eyes and says, Long live the king. Could it be that striking his eyes, it shows the leaders are blind to what is going on? It regards to the coup from the reptilians. Simba is then lying with Mufasa, a young boy lying with a grown man. Then Scar uses the young boy's guilt against him, almost as if it's the boy's fault. This could have ties to the child molestation accusations that seem to fly around the world leaders and industry leaders. Scar then sends the evil hyenas to attack Simba. Simba is feeling bad and the hyenas will eat him. This is showing that the dark entities feed off negativity, such as shame, guilt and fear. The hyenas then claim they have eaten Simba, but they were nowhere near him. Coincidentally, people believe that certain entities cannot interact with the physical world, and is a good this here is a good representation of that. Scar assumes power and uses his own private militia, aka the hyenas, to keep control. Rafiki and Zazu look on. Lazu, the eyes of reality, and Rafiki, the eyes of the ethereal. Rafiki sees past, present, and future. Simba then wanders the desert, 
cast out of his home because of the tempting evil presence like the snake in Genesis, Jesus also wandered the desert in a self-reflective state. As Simone and Pumba, a representation of parts of Simba's psyche. Simba talks immediately about changing the past, which is another trope being thrown around Disney films, again in the Avengers series. What is Disney trying to get at? Timon says you can change the future, but by putting the past behind you, teaching you to turn your back on the world. If the world turns its back on you, turn your back on the world, Timon says. This is a way to get children used to the idea of accepting a, the idea of a new normal. Could this be about the new world order? This is where Hakuna Matata is introduced to Simba. This ties into the new world order because it's introducing a new language immediately after telling him to forget his past. It's also worth noting that Simba has just been through a traumatic event in watching his father die because of his own actions and been lied to about being saved from death. This has been happening for decades. Traumatised children then rebuild them in your image, fit for purpose. In this instance, Timon and Pumba are rebuilding Simba so that they can defend them and fight for them in the future. Isn't this what MK Ultra was? The Akuna Matasa song is teaching Simba not to care. They say they can live anywhere and it means there is no worries. But this is then immediately turned on his head when Simba learns he cannot eat meat whilst living with them. Simba, the prince, is now living alongside his subjects. Could it be that there are stories of demigods and children of gods coming to earth and living alongside people, not consuming their energy? There'd be no energy to consume because they have no worries. Is this a teaching about not caring so that you're not producing emotions to feed the visitors of the earth or our dimension? The animals then teach Simba to eat insects. A lot of people have spoken about how humans should turn to farming insects rather than cattle, sheep and poultry in order to be more sustainable and to be kinder to the animals. Then, a scene where Simba grows up whilst passing a now full moon. The moon is symbolic of Simba walking into the light. He then bursts out of foliage into the light of day as if he's now fully enlightened. Under the rule of the tyrannical star, the prize lands have turned into a desolate wasteland. The hyenas are reported to be chasing off the last birds. Now remember that the birds of the media, they've even chased away Zazu. This shows that a tyrannical ruler will attack the media. It also shows that the media will report on it falsely though, as Zazu blames the hyenas for the birds flying away when it's really Star that's doing it. By this point, Star has perfected killing, just like how the reptilians kill us and feed off of us. Maybe the other species of aliens do it too, but in a more controlled way. In a way that brings balance to the world. Scar is destroying their world with a complete disregard to its future. In the same way a fire just burns a forest. Scar then limits the food source of the other lions, allowing the hyenas to become stronger. Nala then sneaks out of the prize lands against Zazu's recommendation, or you know, remember what the media is suggesting. But then Zazu distracts the tyrannical leader with more tales of his mentally ill family member. The media will have a reprieve and work to save the original leaders. Simba seems to know something that Simone and Pumba do not. But you can also see it in the other way around. Simba knows of the circle of life. But from Rufashi teaches him that lions become grass that feed on antelope that lions eat. Whereas Timon and Pumba see life as a lion. You're alive until you die and that's it, you're finished. Seeing everything is connected means you're very restricted. You can't do whatever you want because it affects everything else. This is teaching children to stay in line and do what is expected of them. Simba wants to do nothing anymore. He has been worn down by Timon and Pumba's ideology of if you relax, everything will be fine. If you just survive, you will be happy because you won't care. Sip Timon teaches Pumba that the stars in the sky are fireflies stuck on that blue thing, whereas Pumba believed that they were balls of gas thousands of miles away. Simba was part of the few. 
the one percent, if you will, entrusted with knowledge by his father that these stars actually are the greatest dead kings of the past, looking down on the pride land. Simone and Pumba then laugh at him as if he's mental, poking fun at him for his beliefs. It teaches children to laugh at ideas that they haven't heard before, to feel a sense of belonging when confronted by new ideas, but only when you're collectively turning down the concept. The dead kings are obviously actually codes for protective aliens, but I can't help but wondering if it is leading towards the idea of flat earthers and it's just a decorated dome, or is it indicative of a simulation theory that reality is whatever you perceive it as? Simone sees and knows it's fireflies. Pumba sees and knows the gas. Simba knows and sees the dead kings. They're all right. Simba releases a tuft of fur that goes down the river and is picked up by the bird, Mazia, remember, which gets eaten, excreted, and heads back to Rafiki's tree, the symbolic tree of life. The next song is The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Timon lists simple locations, saying, Near, near it, near it, the lion sleeps tonight. If we pair this with the short Rafiki scene just before, you could see Simba as a representation of Jesus, or possibly even the return of the alien overlords that created us, saying they're just lying and waiting. We think they're gone, dead, like Rafiki thought Simba was dead. But Simba is still out there, just chilling out and learning. If we were being observed by something, perhaps from inside the moon, that's what that, that's what that something would be doing, in there, observing the planet. Nala, now coming from the newly for lion pride, hunts for the prey, Timon and Pumba, but enters a battle with Simba. This shows that there is a degree of infighting amongst the ruling class for the well-being of their subjects. Could there be a battle going on now with the quote-unquote evil and the naturally quote-unquote good? And they don't even know what they're fighting each other over. Maybe old friends are fighting or siblings, kind of like Enki and Enlil got annoyed at each other in sitting books. Nala, now coming from the newly evil lion pride, hunts after the prey, Timon and Pumba but enters a battle with Simba. This shows that there is a degree of infighting amongst the ruling class for the well-being of their subjects. Could there be a battle going on now with the quote-unquote evil and the quote-unquote good? And I don't even know what they're fighting over. Maybe either old friends or siblings are fighting, kind of like Enki and then they've got a noise at each other in Sitchin's books. Maybe that war is over. Maybe they're rekindling whatever relationship they had prior to their literal or ideological separation, ready to take the fight back to the current evil overlords. Simba says he can't go back there and doesn't want to help out, so Nala leaves without his help, prolonging the misery in the Pride Lands. Enter the spiritual mandrill, the Freaky, who wants to teach Simba who he is or remind him of who he was. He tells Simba that his father is still alive and leads him away through more and more dangerously challenging branches. Then Rafiki appears in front of Simba and invites him to see, telling him to look closer and see that Mufasa's soul is inside of him. Mufasa speaks from the sky, telling him to remember, repeating it. He also said she will always be watching. This ties together with the earlier scene where Timon was singing The Lion Sleeps Tonight by literally saying what was in the earlier scene, like a deranged narration. Simba returns to carcasses and desert, repeating that he needs to fight to protect the light, and now there is up for the fight too. Zazu returns to welcome him. Showing that the media is here, or is it showing the media it will continue no matter what? Using or being used by whatever is present at the time. Timon literally then says, oh look, it's a puppet, which adds to the delayed narration idea I just introduced. 
that in The Lion King, they show you something, and then in the next scene, the characters speak about it so that you kind of understand what has happened in the scene beforehand. Pumbaa and Timon then sacrifice themselves to distract the hyenas. Is this why people used to sacrifice others to their gods? Rafiti gets his staff back and says, My old friend, like something has returned. Is, is this a reference to magic? Could it be that this story is actually playing out now? Could Prince Harry be Simba and he's moving away so that he doesn't have to worry about the kingdom? Could we actually only be experiencing the earlier half of this film and the second half is fantasy? Star then uses Simba's words and guilt against him, getting seemingly stronger and stronger, and Simba then falls off of the cliff, clinging on for his life. At that moment, lightning strikes a dead tree beneath him. Could this be his father? The kings of old, maybe something in the moon, setting fire to the earth below in order to reset the Pride Land. The fire will bring rejuvenation to the lands, making it lush again. Regardless of who wins the battle, making this seem like whatever is watching has no real interest in what happens to the earth, just as long as something is happening there. Star then gets found out after admitting he killed Mufasa. A war then happens between the hellish hyenas and the guardians of the Pride Lands. It then shows how the prey, the layman, can defeat the hyenas or the evil entities by standing up to them. Pumba then calls them bullies and fights them by shouting, he will not be made to feel ashamed. And Simon confirms Pumba feels better and has got it out of his system, almost like he has flushed his system, meaning he is now free, no longer taken over by the evil energy-eating monsters. Zazu, the media bird, then chases one hyena into a rock, but starts to get attacked by saying, let's discuss this. Then Rafiki comes in and beats him with his staff, a symbol associated with magic. Scar is then chased by Simba to the top of the rock in the sky surrounded by fire. Scar, begging for mercy, claiming the hyenas made him do it, attempting to trick Simba. Who gives Scar the chance to leave and run away? Scar wants Simba to kill him, as if that's all that is needed to turn Simba away from the light. Scar then falls from the top into the flames and gets surrounded by the hyenas, the evil force that he just tried to betray. Scar is then devoured by the hyenas, showing the last of the negative energy is being eaten, but the hyena says their bellies are never full. So maybe they'll always be there, waiting to be used, in the shadows, waiting to be accessed and given power once again. Rafiki touches Simba between his eyes, a place associated with the idea of the third eye, like it's a blessing. Rafiki touches Simba in between his eyes, a place associated with the idea of the third eye, like it's a blessing. Also like Christianity when they bless your head, but Rafiki hasn't rubbed anything on the head of Simba. So what if holy water is, 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 is a form of spiritual conductor that allows the priest to harvest the energy of the church goers? Does the priest then take this energy and feed it to a bishop, who feeds it to a cardinal, who feeds it to the Pope, who then feeds all of that energy to the evil entities to keep them at bay? Or could it be more sinister? And they feed that energy to the metaphorical hyenas as payment to keep control of the lands that they have assimilated power in, similar to how Scar allowed them to consume the Pride Lands, just learning from the mistakes made by ancient leaders. Is that why history is so important to religion? It's now raining and Simba takes his place at the tip of Pride Rock whilst it's raining, which will help bring life after the fire and move faster. She speaks from within inside Simba and says, Remember. Immediately, the Pride Lands are full of life, as if all Simba has to do is imagine what was there and it will reappear. Like the Lion Kings control the perceptions of all of those around them. Could this be a reference to Rafiki's staff? Maybe his staff isn't actually a re to represent magic. Maybe it represents technology. 
Maybe by working with Rafiki and his technology, Simba is able to project the world around him, kind of like a simulation. And the cycle starts over, and we are shown a new cub, possibly a new king. Probably a way to allow them to remake Lion King 2. But what do you think? Have you noticed these things? What film should I do next? Do you feel like I've missed anything? Leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Bye.